Before this video starts, if you enjoyed this video, there are many more like it already on the channel. It's many more like it to come in the future, so subscribe. I am trying to hit 125,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd really appreciate it. I upload daily on this channel, so if you're looking for some consistent basketball talk, this is the place for it. Also, drop a like on this video. It only takes one second, and it makes a massive difference. So, with this season coming to a close, my mind is naturally going to what next season is going to look like. And one of the most interesting questions to me for the next coming season is how how good are the Brooklyn Nets going to be? With the available free agents this year being pretty blah and this draft class not having any superstar prospects, at least as far as we know at the moment, I don't think there's going to be any earth shattering moves. At least not nearly as many as last year's crazy offseason. So as a result, the teams in contention are likely to remain in contention, the teams that are at the bottom are likely to stay at the bottom, and basically we're just going to get the 2020 season part 2, hopefully with less viruses. The only significant change that can be predicted is the Brooklyn Nets with Kevin Durant are going to be getting into the mix. This team was assembled in last year's offseason, but due to Kevin Durant tearing his Achilles in the NBA Finals, we didn't see him play but he is going to be back for this season to play with his new all-star point guard partner in Kyrie Irving. However, there are a whole lot of question marks with this team, as well as a lot of red flags that would make me hesitant crowning this team as a legitimate threat. So in today's video, I wanted to go over some of those questions and try and answer them, or at the very least, make a good prediction to what the answer will be. So how good will the Brooklyn Nets be next year? Let's find out. So I said there are a good handful of questions about the Brooklyn Nets, so let me just list all of them out front. First, is Steve Nash going to be a good head coach? Is Kevin Durant going to be the same player returning from his Achilles injury, or if not, how much is that going to affect him? Are they going to trade for a third star, and if so, who and how? Is Kyrie Irving, as well as Kevin Durant and DeAndre Jordan in this seeming mutiny going to be problematic, as Kyrie has a tendency to be? How good will these supporting pieces be? And finally, is this team a serious threat to win the 2021 championship? That's a lot of questions, so why waste time? First of all, what will Steve Nash bring as a head coach? Well, honestly, I don't know. Only time will tell. While Steve Nash was clearly a brilliant basketball mind on the court, that doesn't necessarily translate as a coach because Jason Kidd is a horrible coach, but I will say in the case of Nash, he at least seems to have an appreciation for modern basketball more so than most former players. Similar to Steve Kerr, I feel part of the reason that he was able to bring the success to the Golden State Warriors by unlocking their shooting was because as a player, he was a three-point shooter. Nash has made comments in the past about how he wishes he shot the ball more in his prime, which is a more modern idea, stepping away from the moronic traditional point guard ideology. And with him benefiting so significantly from from revolutionary and progressive modern basketball ideas with the seven seconds or less Phoenix Suns, I feel like he's going to be open to new ideas and modern concepts. He's going to be open-minded, not stubborn, and be like, this is the way basketball has always been played, so this is how we're playing it now. Nothing like that. So I'm confident he has a modern viewpoint. Now, how good his actual plays are, how good of a communicator he is, and how good he is at balancing being lenient while also knowing when to put his foot down, we will have to wait and see. Next, is another question that has a very uncertain answer for me, which is how good is Kevin Durant going to be next season? Well, unfortunately, the Achilles injury is the worst one in sports, and it's really only left an NBA player unaffected once with Dominique Wilkins. In every other case, this injury has either made a player notably worse or it downright ruined their careers. As for Kevin Durant, I have heard the argument and even made the argument myself that Kevin Durant's game is more reliant on his skill combined with his height rather than athleticism. And though Kevin Durant is not a bad athlete at all, it's not a crutch for him, so losing it would not be a huge deal. However, this injury, while I'm obviously no expert, has showed to affect players who weren't really all that athletic as well. Kobe, by the time that he tore his Achilles, was 34 years old. By then, he really was not much of an athlete, or at the very least, he wasn't any more of an athlete than Kevin Durant was when he tore his Achilles. And that injury not only ended Kobe being a superstar player, it ended him being even good. Like, Kobe was horrible for his last three years in the league as a result. As a guy who relied way more on skill than athleticism. DeMarcus Cousins. 
absolutely not an athlete. He has joked before about how he can't jump for shit. I can relate. He was slow and lumbering. His ferocious dunks more so came from size and strength and anger than athleticism. And yet his injury turned him into a role player when he was on the court. And that was when he was on the court because he has continued to get injury after injury as a result of this injury. So there is a real probability that Durant is going to be a lot worse than he was pre tearing his Achilles. As for how good he's going to be on the optimistic side, he's going to be fine and pretty much just the same on the pessimistic side he's gonna be like Otto Porter Jr. I think I'm gonna meet somewhere in the middle with a bit more optimism than pessimism. I think KD will be about 80 to 85% of what he was previously in Brooklyn. On the upside, 80% of Kevin Durant is still probably a top 10 player in the league because Kevin Durant previously was just that good. However, on the downside with him being just 80% of what he was, it's gonna be a lot harder than it could have been if he didn't have that injury. But on a less sad note, let's talk about some trades. It seems as though both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving want a third star on this team. Now, I would make the argument that a third star is not necessarily as impactful as just using cap space and assets to fill out a bench and get some more depth rather than just getting a guy who's not going to get as many shots as Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Now, obviously, that can be overtaken if the third star is just ridiculously good. Like, for example, if Kawhi actually went to the Lakers, obviously they'd be better. But also, if the Lakers didn't wait around all free agency with $40 million in cap space, maybe they could have done better than 15 million a year for a guy who can't hit an open jump shot to save his life. But I also think if Kevin Durant is going to be substantially worse, having a third star to take some of that pressure on him to make him have to do less would obviously be a good thing. As for the answer to who are they trading for and how are they trading for them, I have two big names and one small one. The two bigger names are Bradley Beal and Paul George. In both cases, it would be Karis LeVert and Jarrett Allen with Torian Prince's contract. In a deal for PG, I could see it being a three-team deal where the Clippers get a different star because I don't think PG to Karis LeVert is an upgrade. But for the Wizards and a Beal swap, Karis is a young guard to build around. And of course, Brooklyn would include first in this case. I like the idea of Paul George more because of the defense he brings. And luckily in this case, when you have Kyrie and Kevin Durant, you don't have to rely on Paul George as your second option. So if he is shitting himself in the playoffs as he is one to do, it wouldn't be as consequential for the Nets as it was for the Clippers and Oklahoma City Thunder. A smaller name, is Drew Holiday. Again, defense as well as some playmaking, he would be the best passer on the team and he's someone who can make offense easier for both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. That deal would probably be like Karis LeVert and one first round pick. Next, I want to address Kyrie, a little bit of Kevin Durant, as well as DeAndre Jordan, and the potential kind of mutiny that happened this year in regards to Kenny Atkinson. And if that's a sign that internal struggle is going to be an issue for this team in the long term. I really was mad at Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving for getting Kenny Atkinson fired because A, Kenny Atkinson is a good coach but B and more importantly the whole reason why they went to Brooklyn in the first place was the culture there the reason the Nets got both of those guys over the Knicks was because of the cultural foundation they had but you know who laid that foundation Kenny fucking Atkinson so it's backwards and doesn't make any sense to kick him out after you went there for what he created going there and forcing him out is so contradictory because now that culture does not exist in Brooklyn and there's still some Somewhat of a rift between these two as well as DeAndre Jordan and the players who were there before them last season. Like one of the main conflicts that led to them getting Kenny fired was that Kenny preferred to start Jared Allen over DeAndre Jordan. Which by the way is the right basketball move because Allen is better than Jordan. And they wanted him out. They wouldn't let him do his job. They wanted to do their own thing. Which really pissed me off because as I said it was contradictory and a really bad basketball move. Which ultimately could shoot both of these guys in the foot if this move ends up being the wrong one and Steve Nash is not a good replacement. The degree to which this issue could exist depends on how much of a rift they have with Nash or if it's a seamless mix. It seems to be my way or the highway with them and as a result, I think it could blow up in their faces. But again, only time will tell. Hopefully, this is an isolated incident because if it's not, it could be a recipe for disaster. As for how good the supporting cast with this team is and will be, both Karis LeVert and Spencer Dinwiddie are really good offensive players players. Jared Allen is a really good traditional rim running and rim protecting big man. DeAndre Jordan isn't a bad backup. He's not a great starter, but if Nash is allowed to make the right basketball decision, then that shouldn't be an issue. Rodion's 
Kurooks is still someone that I think has a lot of potential and deserves more opportunity. Joe Harris is a very good three-point shooter, and that's obviously a nice thing to have, assuming they re-sign him. Torian Prince is okay as a 3 and D guy. Kind of sucked this year for the Nets, but I think overall he's a pretty decent player, and Garrett Temple is an alright rotation piece. They don't have really any cap space. They have to bring back Joe Harris, and then after that, the money is going to be spent on, like, fringe rotation players, so no real big impact there. But the core is pretty alright, and that gets us to our final decision. Are the Brooklyn Nets a serious threat to win the championship next season? Well, I obviously think they're going to be very good. However, they are far from my favorite to win the championship. As of now, this team has a whole lot of offensive potential. However, the defense on this team looks pretty suspect. Doesn't look like it's going to be any better than average. Now, if they land any of these three guys that I mentioned, that could change. With PG and Holiday, the defense would improve drastically. And with Beal, the offense would be so good that the average defense would not matter. But the defense, on top of the fact that Kevin Durant might not not be what he was before as well as them having a rookie head coach and potential for some serious internal conflict this is not a good recipe for success now don't get me wrong i could see this team going as far as the finals if they play their cards right however i doubt they beat the lakers or even the clippers and i imagine with the middle of the pack defense the bucks the heat anybody really in the east could give them issues that's a legitimate team so no i don't think the nets are going to win the 2021 championship but i do think they will be in that conversation of course this is subject to change depending on what move they make in terms of getting a third star if they landed paul george or beal my mind would probably change but as of right now don't think so now just cut back to when they're hoisting up the 2021 championship because all of my takes age horribly that is the end of this video please be sure to like and subscribe for more nba content like this and cue the outro music